Hi guys, I'm Nikki Fogden Moore, the Mojo Maker, and on a really fantastic episode today, I'm actually inviting one of my dear friends and the guru of all things finance, Melissa Brown. Melissa, welcome to the show. You've got a new book Thank out, your you. second one, but why budgets don't work, but this one does. Hmm. Exactly. Yeah, just a bit of a catchy title. I like those. But yes, budgets absolutely don't work. We know that from research. And so in this book, I deep dive into why that is and offer solutions. And I think before we go forward, I just want to introduce a bit of your financial guru status to our listeners and viewers here today, because you're not just coming out with a book uh, for the sake of what's happened during COVID or anything else. This has been your life's work, uh, running a tax accounting firm and then the Money Bar, mentoring, coaching, writing for the Fin Review and other Australian institutions, as well as renowned global um, you know, news platforms around finance, forecasting, shares and everything to do with building wealth because it became a passion of yours you didn't want to be without it yeah absolutely and for me it's about teaching others how to do it there could be 50 different paths to get you to the life that you want to design um, but also there'll be a whole stack of limiting beliefs and inherent ways that you should be operating so part of what I'm really passionate about doing is helping you discover that financial awareness, give you financial knowledge, and then help you build financial habits. And I think just one of those things alone is not enough. It's about having all three. A hundred percent. So, and that's really why we're aligned today uh, in that like-minded ability that you can go from survival mode to sustainable success, but you need a new landscape to make better financial decisions, better life decisions really, and realize and recognize when old programming exists, understand that. And formally we call that the ego, uh, which is self-talk, which are patterns that we all have, right? So it's just discerning between a pattern and really what the right decision is. So before we get into it, um, I just want to set the scene around that as well, because when most people think about budgets or they think about designing the life they want or financial goals, we often inherit a lot of values, planning, and what success is based on society, our parents, and our peers. So what do you think some of the myths are uh, around what success looks like? Because I know with COVID, we've got a lot of people that have cars in the garage, mortgages, mm. uh, multiple portfolios, that, or maybe they're doing the first uh, home buyer's grant and they actually can't afford to keep it. So how do we truly um, recognize the myths in what great finance looks like? Yeah, such a good start. Um, so I believe that comes to the nurture part of who we are. Um, and it starts with our money stories. And often we don't think to dig out those money stories that we grew up with or that we've inherited from our parents or from peers or media, or that it's kind of like the frog in the boiling water. We we don't understand why, why we're accumulating and behaving the way that we do. Mm -hmm. And maybe we grew up with the money story that for women, it might be smart girls have to be in a particular profession. For blokes, it might be around status and power and the things you need to have in your life to prove that you have that. Um, for other people, it might be money stories around you actually aren't an adult until you own your own home uh -huh. um, and so much more. And it's, for me, it's part of recognising that money story to the point um, with that Carl Jung quote, until we make the unconscious conscious, it will direct our life and we'll call it fate. So it's recognising the money story and asking the question, is that serving me or sabotaging me? If yep. it's serving me, how do I lean more into that? If it's sabotaging me, how can I rewrite that? And I think let's um, give anyone that's listening to the show knows that I like to give some practical tools. So what Mel and I would like mm -hmm. you to take away today, if you're listening to this, if you're in the car, on the treadmill and you can't write or whatever else, fine. We're going to put the, the details of this in the show notes. And a heads up, you can go to Melissa Brown with an e.com.au. She's got multiple of courses and lots of tips and tools that you can activate all this thinking straight away if you get hungry for all this great advice. But what we want you to do is understand the blurt. So what Mel is talking 
talking about is, you know, you're never going to get rid of the uh, self-talk because that's just insidious within us. But when you recognize that it's a program and you can give it a name, you can hear it, but you can choose not to listen to it. So writing down those old stories is probably a really good place to start uh, whether mm. you want to write it on your phone or write it. But what are your beliefs around money? And I think that's why you've wrote this book, Why Budgets Don't Work, because a lot of people have been steering their ship into the wrong direction. Absolutely. And I think too many of us are carrying this money story around not being enough. Mm -hmm. um, and when we add comparison culture and we're comparing ourselves to people where we're thinking, well, we're at this age, but not at that stage. And then there becomes this hustle where we kind of feel like we have to, in Brene Brown's words, hustle for our worthiness. Um, and when we start to do that, it just becomes activity for the sake of activity and I've met and I've I mean I've had this happen in my own life where I've suffered from burnout because I've hustled and now I hate that word because part of my money story is used to be around what am I doing what am I producing whereas now it's around um what sort of life do I want to design how much income do I want from that what legacy do I want to have as a result but it's got to start with our beliefs. And for yep. me, it's both nurture as well as how do we inherently behave. That combination of money story and money type. And I think money do, right? So the, the difference yes. is, is that what we're talking about here, let's face it, you know, you know, we lead another Instagram quote or I talk a generation exhibition. You know, we love to mm. absorb information, but very seldom do we put the work in place to fortify what we want. So what do you think unearths the need to start doing and changing those habits? What happened for you that you looked up? Because I know you well and I know you went mm. through that, that phase and I know that on the outside everyone thought you were really successful and on the inside you were dying a slow death and you were actually quite unhappy and you were mm. like, is this it? Even though you'd achieved so much. So yeah. at what point do we kick into wishing for something and then realizing that we actually have to start changing our actions towards that? I think it's, for me personally, I know it was just wanting to step off that hamster wheel. And I know a lot of people in business and especially people that are successful have this, where we're caught in this sabotage loop, where to the outside, yes, everything looks great, but internally we're like, okay, I'm hustling, I'm hustling. Oh, but am I enough? Oh, hang on. That's not quite enough. Um, and then you'll self-sabotage it so that you start that sabotage loop again. And I think for me, I just got tired of my own BS. I got tired of the energy drain that being on that sabotage loop created where I'm here publicly telling people, hey, design the life you want, what you love. And yes, I was doing that to a certain extent. But at the same time, not because I just didn't want, I don't know, not everyone wants us to peel back behind the curtain, right? <laughs> you know, I yeah. want it all to look glossy and, and lovely. And I think a lot of people feel the same. But I think until you're prepared to get off that sabotage loop, until you're prepared to get off that hamster wheel and actually do something about it, then it's just energy draining. Yeah. And let's just talk about the business of energy a little bit because we know and understand, and I always say to people, when you start to get interested with the line items on your balance sheet and your PL, life had to go through it. When I was a kid, I got told I was terrible at maths. Mm. I used to like uh, get really nervous before I went into maths class as a kid. Yeah, I had a really scary teacher. She's a big ruler. And I was like, oh. So I actually got. Um, paralyzed at the thought and then when I went through university you had to get a B plus or whatever to get your degree so I started mm. studying maths and getting a tutor and then I realized it was actually I was actually quite good at it so yeah. but you know for 15 years I'd avoided maths and thought I couldn't add up and I'd try and do all sorts of things so with this new turn of COVID and with the spotlight being shed on everyone's kind of what I would call towers built on quicksand is what mm. I like to call it mm -hmm. um, and we're going to give people these tools now so recognizing the unconscious bias that we all have and then going it's okay no matter when you're listening to this at whatever point you're supposed to hear it for a reason and it's mm. understanding that you're in the driver's seat so Mel once they've understood that their limiting beliefs around money they don't have to hang on to those stories anymore because if we fight for them we get to keep them 
Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. That true success actually is not by gaining people's acceptance. It's not by comparing. It's because it, it, we just don't know. Mm-hmm. We have to feel it on the inside. So what are the first steps people should take when they pick up your book or they're listening to this show where they go, you know what, I'm ready for a change because I know mm-hmm. I need to do things differently. And to be honest, that's the thing that I'm hoping is the result of COVID. For me, I'm not interested in Band-Aid solutions, which I think people for too long have been doing because we're good. Uh, Sorry, when times are good, we can put a Band-Aid on it and it could kind of hold for a while. Whereas at the moment, I believe we need transformational change. Mm -hmm. And transformational change only starts from the inside. Um, It starts with transforming how we think about money. So in your example, you need to transform the fact that you weren't good at maths to a new belief around, actually, I'm pretty freaking good at this. And as a result of that, I can change my financial situation. So for us, it's challenging our money story, challenging our money environment, understanding how we inherently behave in our money type, and then setting up bespoke habits that are right for us. So I have a toolkit to look after my physical health. I have a toolkit to look after my mental health. And what we want to do is create a toolkit of habits that look after our financial health that are actually right for us. And I believe once you have those, then you're going to be unstoppable because they're going to be right for you. And I think there there lies in a great expert or a great coach is we're purely navigators for what people want in their own sovereign self, right? So you want to Mm. give people the right to let the stories go and figure out what happiness really means to them. Because you can have all the nicest things, but if you're constantly working to pay for them, you can't enjoy them. Absolutely. And it's it's realizing, am am I wanting those things because... I think I need to have them to be successful Hmm. or am I wanting those things because I really enjoy them? You know, I love shoes. I don't, I don't have, (laughs) I don't have a stupid number of designers shoes because I want you to like me. I just freaking love Hmm. them. But I, I don't need to layer into that travel and, and, and designer this and designer that and the fancy car. Like it's, choosing what's valuable to you and where you want to spend and to hell with what anyone else thinks. Um, And I think that's the key. It's living your life for yourself rather than for other people. And let's talk about the word truth. I don't know if you've been reading my Monday Mojos or watching the show Mm. lately, but I'm doing a truth series because it's all very well to tell people that you want to receive the truth and truth is so important. But in society, we've been taught to be good. We haven't taught to be truthful. So not only do we not how to... Uh, know how to find the truth in ourselves. We don't want to lift up the thing, but we also don't know how to share the truth when we find it. And I think one of the things that I love about your book and the courses and everything else is they navigate you through not being afraid of just knowing where your numbers are right now. Like there's something liberating because with truth comes freedom and with freedom comes choice. So when you know exactly where you sit, even if it's the most dire thing ever, you've got to stop pushing your bills under the carpet and bring all your financial reality to the surface because only then can you take action. Absolutely. And the truth of that is that back in March when COVID hit, I'm sure so many people listening realised this how sick they felt at that point because the truth is most Australians only have a runway of about two weeks worth of cash and there was no getting around that when COVID hit. Mm-hmm. You know, when our jobs were unsafe and suddenly we didn't know what the next day would bring and things were changing every moment, the truth of many of our realities is we built, I love that analogy, houses on quicksand Mm -hmm. where it's on credit and debt and we didn't have the cash that we needed. Yeah. Whereas now it's acknowledging that and saying, right, I have to change my ways. I need a runway of at least three to six months worth of cash. I need to build savings. I want to have cash for opportunities that are going to arise as a result of COVID. But I can't have that and I can't create that change if I don't change and if I don't do something differently. So that's where it's got to start. So first of all, you need people around you as well, like, well, you know, you and I are great cheerleaders for our clients because we help 
give them that confidence to come and do the work with humility before they need mm. to find it. You need a safe place to kind of get naked with your money. Yes. That's probably the greatest way to say it, right? Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. Standing before the mirror, we're in yeah. all your imperfections going, yeah. Ooh, right. That exactly. was unexpected. And <laughs> also, oh, wow, I look better than I thought. I look better than I thought. <laughs> and, and stop the comparison. I love this comparison yes. culture. Really, we have to own our side of the street. So if you're looking at someone mm. else and going, I wish and everything else, three fingers pointing back at you. So I think the first message that Mel and I want to give you, if you're listening to this, is be accountable. Don't be afraid to get naked with your money. Look under every single area of your finances, even if you've got super or you don't have any savings and you've got $20,000 credit card debt. Well, I can promise you, and especially if you work with people like Mel that will give you a roadmap, is that you will never have more time than you do right now. And there is always a solution. So let's just talk about the act of faith and taking the step, Mel, that universally you get supported when your intent is in the right place, correct? Yeah, absolutely. And the worst thing you can do at the moment is to do nothing, to stand where you are doing the same thing that you've always done. So taking a step, even if it's a baby little tiny step, even if you stumble taking that step, it's just taking a step to do something different. Yeah, because no movement actually is t- making a decision in itself. And yeah. mm-hmm. so what we want to encourage you and what I love about this book is we're moving you from fear of finances into curiosity. And I think yeah. you can ignite curiosity about money and you put your, um, it's like watering weeds or watering flowers in your garden. If you're constantly pointing the water at the weeds uh, because you're just not conscious of your thoughts, you'll get more weeds. So what mm-hmm. Mel's saying, and what we're saying with this book is why budgets don't work, but this one does, is because you need to start putting your energy in the right direction as what is next. Yeah, absolutely. And what the, in this interesting time, we don't know what's next, but we can fix ours. Like I can't fix, I don't know what's com- coming with the economy. I can make predictions can make pretty bloody accurate predictions I reckon over the next six months because we know stimulus is running out in September in Australia however I can't predict based on any certainty what's coming after that but I can change and I can predict what's going to happen in my own finances and in my own thoughts and in my own behavior so if we can start there that can sometimes give us the certainty that we're craving So what would you say to people where they're like, well, I have an accountant and a bookkeeper and I've always relied on X, Y, Z, you know, there's power in the brief to those people. So what are the Mm. first steps people should do to uncover and get naked with their money now and really figure out where they're at in all honesty? What's the the next best thing to do, Mel? So once you've looked at how you behave, so your money story and your uh, money environment and your money um, type, You've got to look at ground zero. You've actually got to open your bank statements. You've got to look at your credit card. You've got to look at your asset position and and face where you currently at now. You have to look at the bank money in the bank account or lack of and go, right, is that three months worth of buffer? Um, And start to open up and unpack where you sit financially. And this is where, yes, we want great financial advisors and accountants and all those people supporting us. But our financial literacy is so low in this country Mm -hmm. Um, and globally Globally. that we actually need to start developing our financial knowledge so that when we open those credit card statements, when we open um, that mortgage account, uh, we start to understand what it should be, what our net asset position should be, how much interest we should be paying. So starting that journey of financial knowledge and building that financial knowledge is actually really important. Yeah. And I think, can I give you another analogy from the Nictionary about that? <laughs> the Nictionary. Absolutely. I have all my analogies in the Nictionary. I love note. that. I've got like a little Nictionary book coming out because I say these strange things. But Thank let me you. just talk about the fear of finances and give you guys an analogy. When Mel was talking about that, I always think, how do we translate that for people? Because often when we talk in corporate, sometimes I've been in a boardroom, I go, why, why does opening an email or, you know, responding, why does it cause you a chemical reaction as if you've been chased by a lion? Yep. Like it's, it's the exact yeah. same anxiety yep. that a fear of life. So I always say to people, you know, if you get to know lions and 
and you understand them and their habitat and you know like knowledge is power. So imagine you've got two people sitting in the Serengeti and then all of a sudden a lion just walks past and the one person that hasn't really done any research about lions starts to get up and run and they have heart palpitations, they're in a fetal position and they start texting their friends and family what you know, I love you, good, goodbye. And the other person's going, whoa, how cool. Look how amazing that lion is and look at its mane. And, and they just stay completely still and they are in the driver's seat because they know that with knowledge, you eradicate fear. And I think money is 97% of stress in organizations with staff yeah. because people yeah. are not managing their money. People in breakups and relationships at the moment is because of shame, blame, and guilt around money. So we actually have a due diligence in our future communities to empower each of you to to step out of shame about money and to get educated because then you will feel like the knowledge is your power and, and yeah. start to open bank accounts. Even if you see an incremental increase of 50 cents a day, it's an increase. Yeah. You know? And it's, you know, I, I had people through my financial adulting course um, in earlier in the year. And part of the thing that I loved that I saw happen is they were contacting me going, because part of what I do in that course in one module is open up my share account and show how I invest. So both how I share trade and also how I buy and hold in my super fund. And we don't do that with money. We don't open up, you know, we don't show between the sheets if you like. Um, and I had people contacted me saying for the first time I've bought shares because I understand they're on sale. And that for me is knowledge and power and opportunity because yeah. instead of them acting like the herd and panicking and wanting to sell, they're going, it's all on sale and they were buying. And that's where I got really, really excited because their behaviour changed as a result of the knowledge that they now had. So you're saying with the book, why budgets don't work, but this one does is because what we're doing is you're turning the subconscious belief of money around inside an individual. First of all, we're taking accountability, to get people out of survival mode. Uh, secondly, we're giving them the tools to recognize their money stories. So there's mm -hmm. time to unpack that and to go, wow, you know, I didn't even realize that. But some people I know as well who are very successful are actually afraid and feel ashamed to show they're successful. Yeah, so there's another absolutely. side of that too. Mm -hmm. um, poppy know, syndrome. Yeah, yeah. poppy syndrome. So I think understanding where you come from, and then the next part of the smell, which I love, is navigating where you want to go. So how do we get rid of all the noise uh, when it comes to money, and just figure out what do we really need in today's society to be financially healthy? Can you just give us a quick snapshot of what? what we would need to navigate through this world and be healthy and know we're going to be okay? Well, I think you need to really sort out your money environment. Um, so you need to actually figure out online and offline. Have I, so when I grew up in quite an um, inconsistent, somewhat violent childhood, and there's nothing I could do about that. Now, if I was in that same position, um, I would want to find the tools to get myself out of that. And I see too many people in their money environment are putting themselves in places that they didn't expect that is unhelpful um, and is not fulfilling the goals that they want and is absolutely sabotaging them. So part of what I would want is for people to curate money environments that will help them get achieve the goals they want in life. Because the goals you want, um, Nick, are going to be totally different than the goals I want, are going to be totally different to the goals that a client of mine wants. Mm -hmm. But until we sit down and honestly figure out for ourselves what are those goals, curate money environments that will get uh, take us to the, our goals and then set up those habits that are right for our inherent money type and story, then that's going to be the riptide that just pulls us in the direction that we want to go. And I think one of the other uh, million dollar questions at the moment is how much do we need to know that we're going to be okay in the future? A lot, you know, in the 1950s and 60s, four or five major organizations paid all the salaries for most of each country. And now mm -hmm. all of a sudden we've got entrepreneurs who are paying most of the salaries 
Uh, yeah. Also, we're going through a completely different time where most people are learning to do their own businesses. So what should people have as a, a buffer? Uh, let's say we take a, an individual uh, mm -hmm. and then, you know, I'm not going to get into family of two or four, but if you said to someone, just your first cab off the rank to know you're going to be okay, you should always have a savings of this just sitting there for emergencies. What would that emergency pot need to be for people? Yeah, such an easy question to answer. So for an individual or a family, I'd want minimum three to six months worth of everyday spending. Uh, sorry, not everyday spending, your wants. Uh, so, uh, oh my God. Oh, you know I know what? what you mean. You mean like Your rent, needs. Food, <laughs> rent, rent, bills, yeah. electricity. Sorry, I'm talking way too much today. No, I love um, it. So it's three to six months worth of your spending. So bills, mortgage, school fees, like those sort of expenses. So that if there is a dip, if I, if I lose my job, if there's an illness, if life happens, or even to give me choice, I then have that pot of money set aside so that I have got choice. Um, and same for our businesses. So we should understand in our business how much it costs us to keep our doors open each month. And then I would want, again, three to six months at a minimum worth of cash or access to cash where I can have that for my business so that if something was to happen, I can grab that money and be able to continue. Can you imagine if a hospitality business had that in their cash when COVID hit? Yes, their doors were closed. Yes, JobKeeper eventually came on, but at least they'd be devastated, but they'd go, right, at least I've got that runway there ready. And I think there's an argument around how we've been governed, how we've been educated right back mm -hmm. into, you know, one of the great things that, because with a lot of the work that I'm doing now, which is the business of energy, is that often we say to people, just listen or just concentrate. Yes. But we've never taught anyone uh -huh. how to listen. We've never said to someone, here is the art of concentration. We've just, you know, we just bombard people with the rules of engagement. And then, and then we tell them this is the, the scope that you sit in. So I know that you've done amazing work empowering women to get financially literate and to understand the role of finance and in their interdependence, not just independence. Mm -hmm. But I want to touch on a dear subject to me, mostly because I work predominantly with men, is there's a lot of fear and shame where people that were going to work and had all the great titles, they weren't managing the money well and yep. the bottom's fallen out. And the mental stress uh, and the shame factor and the guilt around this is actually causing some severe uh, responses. So yeah. what would you say to any um, CEO, man, founder, father, partner that's listening that tried to keep up appearances and then realized that actually there was no escaping and the truth was going to come out. The spotlight was there. How do we navigate moving from shame financially to, you know what, we're still breathing. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be okay as a man knowing this to provide for his family. Yeah, I would absolutely recognize that shame when it bubbles up because it's going to and to know that you are absolutely not alone in this. There are so many conversations I'm having with people where they're filled with shame because mm -hmm. of how they're handling it or because they thought times were good and therefore they could behave a certain way yeah. and then COVID hit. So please know you're not alone but then also know you've got to do something different. So yes, times were good. You operated a particular way. Now that's not the case. So if your money story is all around that I have to provide for my family, that a man provides for my family, then you are in this moment going to feel less than because you're not doing that. So what I want you to do is question, why does that have to be financially only? You can be providing uh, support for your family. You can be there for your family with emotional support, with your strength, with just your ability to be there for your family in time at the moment and emotional support. It doesn't have to be financial. So to reframe that, but then to actually take action to change your finances. So that might be selling the house because yes, was a good idea at the time, but now do you really? And you can reframe that for yourself. Sure, you could see it as a failure that I can't afford to keep it anymore. Or 
Is it just choice to no longer be in that rat race, in that prediction, that predicament where I have to work these hours and be at this heightened stress level in order to tick these boxes of success? Mm -hmm. So should I downsize? What can I liquidate so that I can um, reduce my expenditure? Because my fear is that a lot of people have got mortgage payments and all the rest of it on hold till September. Mm. And then when October hits, then what? So we've got to start taking steps in the next 90 days, knowing that that cliff is coming. And I think that's the point, right? Well, let's talk about transparency, truth, and the ability to make informed decisions. If we mm. think about it, we're never truly given the whole picture to make an informed decision. Yeah. And and we can, uh, you and I could argue about that and we could go on many shows and talk about it. But the real outcome of that is all you can control is your ecosystem mm. and understanding the uh, ingredients that you have to work with right now. So can you hold up your book too, Mel, so we can see yeah. the cover? Absolutely. Yeah, look at so that. Pretty. Um, so I think that just getting uh, using this downtime or using this time of uncertainty to actually twist that around and see it as a time of opportunity, a time to declutter, a time to bring everything out that had mothballs on it, a time to realign with what you truly value in life because chances are what you were chasing and striving for probably isn't fulfilling you and left you in a place of anxiety and lack of communication with your spouse or others. Mm. What do you want to create? for your family legacy in terms of communication and happiness for your children? How do you want them to inherit stories around financial legacy as well? Because our actions determine patterns not only from the past, but for our future generations. So we want to encourage you on the show to look at the business of energy, to go find, to lean into your finances like a rally, uh, you mm-hmm. know, to suit up, to get your numbers right, to talk to your spouse and say, this is probably going to be one of those big, ugly discussions, but let's get amongst it, you yeah. know? And it's the opportunity to do something different and to mm-hmm. blame it on COVID, but also to say, you know, I know so many people that have said, myself included, I no longer want to work 70, 80 hours a week. I actually want to work three days a week, but work really freaking smart. Mm -hmm. And yes, that might mean that I'll have a bit less stuff. Um, Yes, that means that some things may take a little longer, but I actually want, this time has shown me that I want quality of life as much as I want quantity. So it's just reframing it in a really positive way. Um, and maybe it's so that your partner or your spouse who may not feel tr- like they have choice if they're not working and you are, um, just so that they can reframe it as well to say, so this is not a failure by our family. This is a, this is a decision to change the quality of our life. Yeah, and I I think to some degree the failure has been in society in creating foundations, programming, uh, you know, miscommunication, constraints, fear, and restrictions around talking about money. Uh, Mm. It's a bit like before sex became cool. You couldn't talk about that either. And um, (laughs) so we want, you know, finance is the new sexy. It is extremely uh, empowering when you put yourself and that driver's seat. And as part of adulting, you know, the rally of life, which is of course the book that I wrote, which times into your, I love the fact that you've got a financial adulting course, because what we need Mm. to do is get people to understand that nobody else can run the show for you, but the programming we've been given is outdated and we can't use it in today's landscape. And who knows what that landscape is going to be, but that's why you require agility and you can't have agility until you know your ingredients. So we urge you today while you're listening to this that uh, your old budgets probably didn't work your old beliefs probably didn't work but that gives you a whole new opportunity to rewrite the script to roll your sleeves up to get excited to know that you're supported with people like melissa brown uh brown with an e.com (laughs) au um and go grab that book that's That's right budgets don't work uh but this one does two books already actually the first book that mel did was unfuck your finances excuse the language uh youtube but it's actually the title of the book so i can't help it um and and i want to encourage you to go and search out more about mel more money for shoes on instagram she's on um her own website you'll find her on linkedin there are many tools resources 
I just type in the name in Google because I don't know anyone that wants to give back more inside the financial community and open up her closets to how she makes her numbers work. So Melissa, I said, what's one parting comment? I know we're going to do a little express session after this on there's no new normal. So let's hold that bit. But um, what would be the f one piece of advice you just want to give people as we close off this episode today on really becoming empowered with their money, no matter what's going on around them? Look, um, and I know it might seem a bit abstract, but uh, Brene Brown is a shame researcher from Houston. And she's had a quote that said, um, when you define your story, um, it owns you. But when you rewrite the story, then you can write yourself a brave new ending. Mm -hmm. And for me, a lot of people are caught in a shame story. They're caught in a story that they just did not expect to be in. But it's being brave enough to own it and to rewrite a brave new ending. And financially, that's what I want to see people doing at the moment. I think that's a fantastic place to end. Melissa Brown, thank you so much for being on the show today, the Mojo Maker podcast and on Vitality Coach TV, talking to you on how you can become bold, brave, and also empower yourself with finances. No matter what is going on in our world, you got this. So Melissa's book, uh, Budgets Don't Work But This One Does, is available through Booktopia online, also her own website with courses to go with it. Not only does she look fabulous, but this lady has the brains behind it, <laughs> the brains and the beauty. And it's such a pleasure to know go-getters. And I think what I love about our conversations is this like-minded approach is that we have to be the new breed of leadership. We have to say not only, yes, you can have whatever you want, but most of all, here's how you can start achieving that. So, Melissa, thank you so much. You're very welcome. Press session. If you want to sign up to more, hop on to vitalitycoach.com.au for Monday Mojos. Like and subscribe. Hit that little button below there because we'd really love that. And we'd love your comments and questions, and, and I'll forward them on to Mel as well. So, until next time, remember, guys, that you're in the driver's seat of life. It's not Formula One. No one's going to come and pick off the lint before you. It's actually a rally. So, you've got to have all seasons and all conditions and thrive in that. And we wish you a fantastic winning week ahead. I'm your host, Nikki Fogden-Moore. Thank you for joining. And until next time, you stay healthy, wealthy, and wise. <laughs> <laughs>